With me today is someone who I think should be in the limelight more than he is, but he'll, he'll explain why that is not the way it currently is and um, what he's doing and why he's uh, noteworthy. Welcome, Slobodan. Well, or... thank you, Ramko Stamp. It's a pleasure to be in this podcast. It, it, it's two things that I care about a lot, that I've benefited from a lot in my career, WordPress and performance. Yeah. Which probably means not a lot of people care about it, if it's easy to make money off of it. Uh, why I'm not in the limelight? Let's talk. I think I am. I think lately I kind of have been, but I, I've always been the kind of person that implements stuff, like does the work. I don't like to talk about it until recently. So let me tell a bit about, yeah. about myself. I've been in, in WordPress bubble, let's call it that, because it definitely is a bubble for it is know, a bubble. 15, it is 15 a bubble. Yeah. years. Like we go back to, to like the blue dashboard, the ugly blue yeah, dashboard yeah. from 2.x. So that's when yeah, I started. Yeah. And uh, uh, honestly, I taught myself how to write code, how to do the front-end development, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, you know, before jQuery yeah. even. And back then, wow. all the lessons were, yeah, yeah. All the lessons were, you know, make sure the code is up to standards, make sure you do this. If we only had been doing that for the last 15 years, we would not need to talk about performance right now because everyone would be doing it properly. But yeah, yeah, that's yeah, not yeah. but that's not, where we, no, that's, that's not, not where we are. So just to, to, to let the people know what I do, I also host a podcast. It's called No Hacks Marketing. It's we like to call it the only podcast that's strictly about website optimization brought in the broad sense. So that's, you yep. know, that, that's kind of content optimization, speed, performance, all that. We have guests every week. I'm sure you might be on a future episode if you feel like it. Uh, so I, I think uh, I I think other than that, other than that, I am a website optimization consultant. I've spent, I don't know, five years uh, as a CRO in e-commerce, CRO consultant in e-commerce, but also performance and technical SEO. That's really... Well, to me, that's that's about writing writing good code. Like, if your code is messy, and can I use bad words on the podcast? Can like I don't care. shitty, shitty. Yeah. Let's put it that way because that's what it <laughs> hey, is. If, it, if it's shitty, it's shitty. There is no other word for it. The, well, there crap, we go. I guess we, we are yeah. crappy. Yes, if if the code is crappy, like it needs to be fixed. You know, down yeah. the line at some point. So that that that's really what I do. I I I, I fix bad web experiences, whether that's for uh, bots crawling the website or for people trying to buy stuff on the website. That, that, that's yeah. what I do. I, I just come in and you know, try to fix it as much as possible. I think you and I have a lot of overlap. I mean, I know you and I have a lot of overlap. Um, when people ask me what I do, um, I, I start with, uh, you know, I, I make websites and I make them fast and performant and all that. And they go kind of look at me like, what, what does that mean? Uh, and then I switched. Uh, I switched rec recently to. Um, I help make the internet faster and better. Not and for some problem. reason, that's for some reason good. that that's easier for people to digest because, like, make a website. I don't know what that is, but oh, I, I interact with the with the internet all day, and I know what it means when it's better and faster. So yeah. So uh, no, but great. Um, um, I think there's uh, there's a few interesting things I I'd love to discuss with you. Um, and, and, and probably, and this is what I ask everybody who's on the podcast, like, what is the one thing that drew you into the performance side of things? Because right. um, you and I both come from the WordPress community. And if there's one thing easy within WordPress is to essentially do whatever you like. And <laughs> you don't, you don't have to care too much. That is a choice. Um, you chose, I chose, there's plenty of who other, other people who chose to, you know, not just do the here you are thing, but we both both do the here you are, but the here is a way better version than what you would normally get. So yeah. what what drew you into that side of the, um, the the website building game? Let me try to come up with an analogy. I, I know you like cars. Like I happen to know you like cars. So let's say uh, there's a workshop that builds a car that a, a workshop that builds a car that looks good. They deliver the car to you. It looks great. Like it, it just your dream car. You yeah. start the car. It's slow. It's leaking oil. All that shit. Yeah. Is that a good workshop? Is that a good car? Like, well, is there anyone on what I who paid for it? But no. Well, the, yeah. But let's say you paid premium or you paid yeah. not too low on that. Yeah. That's what, in my opinion, what most of WordPress and it it goes beyond WordPress. This is Shopify. This is all the CMSs where there's there's crutches yeah. to lean on, basically. Yeah. 
we build a website and yeah, but it's it's WordPress fault. Like they do it that way. I couldn't have changed it. I couldn't. No, no, no. That that's not the case. Like if you're building a website using any platform, like you need to care about the end product. You can't just say it's slow because of WordPress or it, no. you can't. Sl- Maybe controversial, but you can't say it's slow because of Elementor and all the add-ons. Like th- that that's the one thing that I don't I don't really approve. Like all unnecessary page builders, let's put it that way. Like when you need a page builder, you need it. I have but, a I, I have a very similar uh, opinion on it. I, I I I will say I'm coming around a little bit, but that's mostly because there is there are two page builders who are really putting in an effort into making um, their end product faster. One of them right. is Elementor, uh, and they the are. other one is Bricks. They, they so they're, they're, there's yeah. movement, and 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 as long as there's movement, I can see okay, we, we can work with that. But if uh, absolutely, I I completely agree with that, and I've noticed, I've seen that. Like five years ago, four years ago, Elementor was oh that was horrible. That was horrible. Avoided at all costs. Like that that's what yeah. was. But to to, yeah. to answer your question, what drew me into performance? It's really, I mean, going back to my early days of writing code, like writing HTML. And what I said, if it's shitty, it's going to be shitty for everything, for conversions, for, for performance. Yeah. For... So yeah. Yeah. I just don't get how we got from like a light average web page 15 years ago that had basically what it needed to have. And that was it. Like, how do we get to let's put in that library? Let's put in that tracker. Let's put in this. Let's put yeah. that. Let's host this render blocking third party script let's put it in the head because why the fuck not because that's what the tutorial or stack overflow answer said yeah like, yeah as you can tell i but get annoyed i, I get I, upset and and that's why i'm in this like that that's really why yeah. i'm in this so i th- i think the um i i i i, I kind of share again a, a similar poll like uh born out of frustration so one of the first things that I did differently in WordPress than uh, my contemporaries at the time, uh, and I say this in a very old-fashioned way, but I do mean at the time because that is, um, we're talking 2008, 2009. Right. When I started really, um, so I came from an enterprise background um, and building projects, um, which happened to have a lot of website components at the time. Um uh, funnily enough, uh, I built a lot, built a lot of stuff in Lotus Notes as well. Uh, oh, don't, don't get me started on how how foobard that was. But to come back to the point, so the the um, the realization that anybody could essentially build a website, not fully understanding the implications of the choices they make along the way, I think really started to take off around 2010. Like uh, WordPress got custom post types, custom taxonomies. Um, it just became a very versatile tool, allowing to be used for way more than it originally had in mind, uh, which is not a bad thing in in its of, in a, of itself. But um, it brought the problems you mentioned. It meant that people just kept adding stuff instead of thinking about the consequences. Yeah. Do you remember the days of how to do X without a plugin, like the tutorials? Yeah. That was yeah. amazing, right? That that that's that's kind of what started all this mess because yeah. it just showed people, like you said, anyone can do anything with WordPress, and that was a, a very cool thing at the time. Like it was amazing, but I think it's still hand, cool. I think it's still cool. It is. I think it, it, it is. But, it, but it, on, on the other hand, anyone can do anything with WordPress, and and that's the bad side of it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that it, this is a this is a perfect example of a of a of a essentially a um, uh, it's a two sided thing. It's a it's a Yana's thing, right? One one side makes you happy, and the one side makes you sad. It's or or, or both sides make some people happy and make some people sad and angry. Let's just put <laughs> so, it that way. I, I bet there's folks that get mad on either side. Yes, absolutely. Uh, but I get I, I guess there's also folks that will that will be happy about either side. So. Um, it's, it, so you mentioned a little bit about doing, uh, optimization, um, right. and, 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 and since, uh, since you just mentioned that, uh, a lot of your triggers into why am I doing this, uh, this line of work, uh, we're around, uh, I'm just going to call it, uh, lean and mean, because essentially uh, that's, I think that's where it boils, uh, boils it down to. Exactly. So yep. what is the one thing? that you really thrive on like okay 
this is it was this is a great project this is this makes me happy because i get to do xyz what is what is the thing there i mean do you I mean, let, let's let's start with this do, do you build sites from scratch not anymore okay. not anymore definitely not i mean it's been it's been years since i've done that so definitely not i, I find a lot more joy in just you know trimming the fat from websites like literally doing that the kind of project project that brings me joy is really just going there and let's say using web page test and seeing, like I said, like my biggest trigger these days is third party render blocking assets because yeah. no one in their right mind or any other mind should be doing that ever. So go to a website and see that like they have 17 render blocking assets. Yeah. Clearly they have never run lighthouse. Well, or any tool I would say, yeah. or anything yeah. at all. So w when you see something like that, I, I just, it makes me happy. Like these small changes, like will make everything better for this client, especially. And yeah. again, I need to make a point, make this a point. If it's a third party, if that domain goes down or is slow, it's going to white page your website for a minute. And then it's going to say, Hey, I gave up. Like I, I, I couldn't get anything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's a, it's a dependency you don't want, and in many cases you don't need. In specifically, yep. not in that place. Never in that place. Even even Google Fonts, yeah. like even Google Fonts, like. Oh, which... I, I, I would even say, especially Google Fonts, uh, because the, there's an extra component there, and that's the privacy part. Uh, yes, that that's a completely yes, absolutely. That 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 is. Yeah. A... There's not enough time to talk about that as well. <laughs> no, no, no. Fonts. That's, there's that's definitely a different not... podcast. Yes, but but uh, even the like Google fonts, they don't have an SLA, but they say we never went down. And like that's good enough for most people to put that in the head uh, of, of every page of their website. And the, it just doesn't make sense. And another thing in WordPress that really makes me WooCommerce, WordPress, all that space, the entire space, when you go and see that they have every CSS and every JavaScript file from every plugin loading in every single page of the website. Yeah. And things are getting better. Yes, that, that's definitely a fact. On, on that particular topic, because I, I'm, I'm aware that a lot of people are not aware of the fact that there's a solution for this. What is your favorite solution to only load uh, on a page that what you need besides right. just hand coding everything yourself? The easiest is there's a plugin called, I think it's CSS JavaScript Asset Manager or something like that where you can just check the boxes, like load it only on this page, load it only in this yeah. template, like whatever. Th th that's that's my go-to because it's by far the easiest one to when you're working with a website that someone else built. But when you're building a website yourself, you yeah. need to have those snippets. Like you need to have that ready. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, um, I'm, I'm always surprised of the amount of stuff that's being added without even thinking about the consequences. So uh, let's take the, f like, let's take a, um, uh, a form, right? Mm -hmm. For for most websites, that's on the contact page only, and they may have maybe a form somewhere else. But let's just say, for uh, I, I think this is safe to say, I think about eighty percent of the sites will have just a contact page with a contact form. To then load every single asset that particular contact form uses on every single page all the time makes zero sense, zero sense. And I just don't get how that's not part of their. Yeah, but but do you know why that or... happens? Because again, the Stack Overflow answer or the tutorial just said WP and Q script, WP and Q style. And that was it. There's no if this, then that, if this, then that. Yeah, I, I, I get that. I, and still, I would I would argue that in this day and age, that if you're not conscious of uh, your impact on that, um, and, and that being whatever is being loaded, uh, whatever is uh, limiting your, your 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 performance in one way or another. Um, I, I think, at least on the on the side of Google, there's been quite a bit of push to get us to understand we need to focus on this. So if you're currently building solutions and you're not taking that into account, I think you're missing something. Absolutely. I mean, the push you're talking about, of course, is the 2020 Core Vitals announcement and all that that followed. Yep. Like that, that's what they made it kind of a mainstream discussion in yep. an effort to lower their crawler bot electricity bill. Let's be honest about that. Like they want to waste, not waste resources crawling the, the shitty things on the internet. Like that, that, that's kind of the bottom line here, which 
is understandable, which, yeah. which is how it should be. It kind of made it mainstream, yes, for a year. Do people really talk about all that stuff that much anymore? Um, you're asking me or is that a rhetorical question? <laughs> That's both. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I mean, it, it's definitely not as loud as it was. I, I would agree with you. It's not as loud as it was, but I think that it's mostly because I think the 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 those in charge there kind of mm -hmm. went like, okay, we we've been vocal enough. You should know by now. It should be part okay. of the curriculum. It should be. I think that's kind of the. Okay, well, I don't I don't know. It's my assumption, but I I think the assumption there on my end is that uh, they figure that the initial push that needed to be given is given, and from here on, you know. Um, should be part of any curriculum. Any anyone right. jumping into the world of um, of uh, web development should understand that there is a way to optimize, and that that needs to be part of your um, your core stuff that you do. Obviously, right. it's not, but but I think that's what they're thinking. I mean, you you and I, we know each other from from work camps, and like we've seen each other at conferences. May, how many work camp Norway twenty? No, 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 no. Leiden, Leiden, Leiden was the first one. That was the that 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 was the first one, and then Norway, and work, then th there was work, a few. Work more. Camp Europe, yes, in Leiden, yes. the yes. very first one in 2013. To what, so I was right on the year, just not on the location. Okay. Yes. So, yeah, and so, and then Norway, and and then a lot, everywhere. a lot of work camps after that. Yes, including my yeah, new yeah. home, Porto. So yeah, yeah. Uh, so how like you you're still the in WordPress circles, you you are the performance guy. I'm sort of the performance guy among the, I'm not in the limelight, but for people who know me, they think of me, this guy cares about performance. Like it, they, they pretty much know that. And I'm that yeah. guy. What does yeah. that tell you about the entire ecosystem? If yeah, we're yeah, that, the guy, that means there's I, no other guys and girls in the ecosystem. I, I think you're proving my point. It's uh, the push was done. And from there considered to be enough of a push. Yep. Um, but it's, um, um, I, I'll answer this differently. So my my sort of uh, rebranding of my personal site and the stuff that I do, uh, I put uh, performance uh, first, not necessarily just in what I produce, but also how I, how I brand myself. And the reason for this is that I, I don't do it any different than I did years ago. The thing that I do differently... Um, is talk about it and mm. and share more. So the branding is not just hey, this is a label. It's a great label. Moving on, and you know, uh, but it's also the um, a continuation of something that was already there. And I know from that perspective, there are plenty more that are doing similar stuff. That are doing great stuff. Not everybody touts the way I do it or you do it in terms of performance. But I um, and. <laughs> This is this is very well possible to be um, a bubble within a bubble. Uh, maybe, maybe, yeah. That that that's actually that's likely. I would say. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm saying it as I'm realizing it. I'm saying it. So I'm like, mm, yeah. One that's, thing. So, I so, uh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. No. Now I was going to say. So the, the, I I can point out a few folks that do have a performance first uh, mindset. But I also know some really smart developers that are doing fantastic stuff that if you ask them, so what about performance or how have mm. you taken performance into account? They go like blank, like um, I didn't. Or yeah, but there's, but there's, there's a, a few things plugin. I know to avoid, so I avoid there's those. There's a caching plugin. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, that's a, I have an opinion about that. I really, I, I don't. I, I, I don't think I do. Like the, the whole thing would, we're talking about mainly front-end performance. This is what I do, front-end performance. You probably do both, but I think you're focused on front-end as well, right? Yeah, yeah, I do both. But uh, okay, I, I, I try to be as smart as possible in, in terms of yeah. uh, focusing there where the budget allows me to be most. Absolutely. That, and, and that makes perfect sense. Like with with front-end performance, it doesn't matter what happens on the back-end. Like as long as that page is pushed from the server quickly. Like it needs to be... If the page is delivered, like the response time, and the page comes back in, in 400 milliseconds, but the page sure. has, I don't know, maybe 200 requests on it, yeah, and it needed to have 50, it doesn't matter that, that your backend performance is, is, is amazing. 
it really doesn't because it's going to load slowly for most people. Yeah. Because yeah, of the, yeah, yeah, the limitation yeah. of their devices. I'm thinking mostly of the exception being scaling. So yeah. Um, one of the things I find amazing that people don't haven't picked up on it yet is as soon as you add something like e-commerce, the, the best example. As soon as you add something in cart, mm. everything on the site is no longer cached. Because oh, really? you have a you have a cookie. Okay. Okay. So that cookie means uh, as I am progressing to shop for more items, uh, I invalidate cash, which means mm. if if uh, you know if I'm one of the ten folks doing that in a minute, it's all gravy. Doesn't matter. Right. Um, but if I'm one of the ten thousand people who just got an email, and the tracking parameters, for instance, that uh, are used by Mailchimp or or any of the other um, or advertising, for instance, mm. all those tracking parameters also invalidate cash. Cash. So anybody visiting through a link like that sees an uncached version of your site, and then the problem you just mentioned becomes a problem for everyone. Yeah. Because it, you can you can cache the shit out of it, but if you bypass cache, then you are looking at raw, and then um, backend um, smart things. Yeah, they become they they become important. So they they um, do backend stuff. Doesn't matter to me because I don't do it. Let, let's put it that way. It does matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah but yeah. it can be perfect. Like it can be incredible. It can be a hundred milliseconds to deliver yeah. the page to get it back, and yeah. then that page is going to be ten times bigger and have ten times more assets than it should have had. And as and the none, volume not, of the traffic of it matters. Yeah, and if as the volume of the traffic increases, that becomes a bigger issue. Yeah. The, no matter how you look at it, the 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 time to first byte is the best indicator, I think. Is the best indicator of uh, of letting you know how efficient your site actually is. So absolutely, uh, yes. Uh, yeah. if, if if that's provided by cache, that only tells half the story. But when you test uncached time to first byte and it's fast, you're generally not going to have a problem if there's more people. But if your cached version is fast, but your uncached version is not, you're going to have a problem if you send that's out that newsletter. Issue. Which is why. Help! My site went down because I sent out my newsletter to ten thousand people. Yes, but of course it did because everything was uncashed that they saw, and you had a great offer. Everybody wanted to check it out. Right and here we are. Oh, that's definitely that. That's definitely a huge issue. But we mentioned core web vitals and all that stuff. That 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 yep. is people need to know. That has nothing to do with the server. That that's that has everything. Not not nothing. Not nothing. But Close, close, close to that. Close yeah. to nothing. Let's put it that yeah. way. That has yeah. everything to do with the device the user is on. I had a client recently. I made their website faster last summer. Like, yeah. It, it, it was very, very bad. Now it's very okay. Let's put it that way. And their core web vitals started failing again. They bought traffic that happened to be 3G traffic, like from yeah. slow devices, from, from markets where, you know, it, it's just... Slow internet, slow devices, slow everything. And then Google monitors that and they say, okay, this is not loading fast enough for, for most people. Like you need to take yeah. that kind of stuff into account when, yeah, when yeah, you're yeah, building yeah. Uh, the website and the pages. I mean, a, a plain HTML website can be slow as hell. Yeah, yeah. In the same way, and I, I, I love this example. Um, um, I generally am of the opinion that caching shouldn't happen inside WordPress. I think front-end optimization should in, should happen inside of WordPress. I think front-end yeah. optimization in the the most hardcore way, and, and I know that's how you uh, build your sites or optimize your sites. You said you didn't build anymore, but uh, um, I'm, I'm so, retired from that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm ooh, retired. Nice. I like the sound of that. The um, there is a scenario where caching your site by a plugin actually. Mm. Uh, slows down your site because yeah. like just consider this the whole application needs to load first that's WordPress and every single plugin and theme then we have one particular plugin that needs to do some checks hmm. is is this a, do we have this as a cached version that's a quick check but it's a check nonetheless then from that oh yes I have a cached version of this page I'll then serve you this uh, page um that's a that's that's quite a lot of, that needs to happen before caching is actually served. So, if you look and if you're looking at high high traffic sites that are having bursts, um, mm. caching will hurt. Um, so you should, in my opinion, cache on server level 
So Nginx right. uh, microcaching is the best way, I think. Uh, combined with cloud, whatever you can do on, well, I, could, I should say, whatever you can afford on Cloudflare. Well said. Yeah. Everybody wants enterprise, but nobody wants to pay for it. It's not cheap. For, for not most cheap. people, it is no, quite no, expensive, it's, I know. I think it starts at 5K or something. It's not cheap. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Eloquently put. <laughs> one, one thing that, and this is something I haven't tried, but I, I think has potentially has future in WordPress space as well, is Cloudflare has those ESIs or edge side includes. Yeah. I haven't worked with that. But if you can cache the entire page in on Cloudflare, like on their servers, and then have those includes just replace the dynamic parts of the page. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That is definitely something I, I haven't had a time to really even try that. I, I've seen some people write about it yeah. where they basically deliver a fully static version of the page and then they combine with the dynamic version and just replace some things. I think with ed, edge side includes, you need to build yeah. your website in that way. That, that supports I've, I've, it, of course. I, I've seen those. So I have a few clients that I use. Um, um, need to say it correctly. So I have a few clients. So one one in particular that uses a uh, that only blogs in Dutch mm -hmm. and blogs blogs a lot in Dutch. So anyone visiting from uh, Russia, China, India, really they they don't they care less about it. So um, what I have implemented for them is a part of their web application firewall inside of uh, Cloudflare. Mm -hmm. that if you are from that region, you then see a, okay, just let me show you're human. Okay. And, if you, okay. and if you are, you move on. So that check that let me show you're human uh, is built as a variable inside a static version of their site in the same way that you just mentioned. That, that's really but, smart, yeah. But moving on from that is, is super interesting. Like, how much could you do? Yeah, interesting. You could do everything. Like, you could, you could, like, you know, when you're loading pretty much any web app these days, and, you know, there's, there's the, the loading yeah, stage when it's just flashing. You can just show that until you get the include and just populate. Let's say you have a, you want to personalize your e commerce stores and you want to show different popular products depending on the user, and that's going to be your include. Just yep. have that section, reserve the height so you don't mess the CLS, going back to Core Web Vitals, yep, and just yep. push that to the edge cached version of the page and just include that. You, and you have not built anything with that yet, but you never, are Never, never. Ne again, I'm, I'm kind of trying to, to move myself away from web development and more into building tools. And I don't know, CRO is still a passion of mine. Yep, I, I really yep. love doing that. So I haven't had a time, but I will try something soon ish for sure i think that is a lot of the making wordpress work with that or allowing it woocommerce like, yeah. let's just say because e-commerce yeah. again is is where the money is yeah yeah for sure and, and where the the personalized stuff is allowing woocommerce to do that and work with cloudflare i think that 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 could solve a lot of problems yeah yeah it's it's, it's a wonderful example so so this this started with me explaining that uh, caching can hurt your performance. Mm. Um, it's just and this is mostly a thing of volume, right? But uh, Cloudflare is something that needs to be in the mix. If you're not thinking in terms of moving stuff to the edge already, then this is your wake up call. Start thinking in oh, what absolutely. can I move to the edge? Um, and Cloudflare to me is the perfect example. There are other examples if you don't want to, if for whatever reason Cloudflare doesn't rub you the right way, I guess that can happen. But um, I'm 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 all in on Cloudflare, um, but yeah, this is this is a great example of uh, where I think optimization should go, uh, rather than fully headless type of stuff, because that's a different approach to a sort of the same problem. Um, right. But I, um, I don't yeah. think it's I don't think it's necessary. I mean, headless WordPress is kind of a sexy idea, and it has been a sexy idea for like eight years now. Yeah. Yeah. Which kind of tells you that it's not really ever going to hit mainstream because it, it's think still it's, the one. I think it's niche. Of WordPress. Yeah, I think it's super niche. Very, and very. I think and, it's great. I think it's great. Yeah. I think there are a few scenarios where it makes sense, but on the whole, um, and and um, in fact, my newsletter goes out uh, today. 
highlighting this particular fact. And when I wrote out it in my newsletter, I figured I need to write a proper blog post about it because I think the 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 locations where this makes sense is are 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 few and far between, for the most part, because you need great hosting and proper application um, architecture before this actually becomes an issue. Like the amount of stuff that you have to do to fix being headless, ah, it's just not worth it for me. There's other ways that, to do it. That's what I think as well. Yeah, there's, there's other tools, other ways. To go back to headless and why it's a niche, like WordPress is what, 40 something percent of the web? These 40, days, like 43 web. something, yeah. 43 something. And let's say like there's 100% of people that built those 43% of websites. Like yeah. what is the percentage of website creators, let's call them assemblers, developers, whatever, that even know that headless exists? I would say it's under five for sure and probably much lower. Yeah, it's quite possible. So it's quite possible. It's just not going to happen. If you're, if, if you're including the, um, the, the Elementor crowd, the page builder crowd. Everyone. And people a, who just set up a WordPress website on their own without necessarily yeah, yeah, a page builder. They're not going to know. They're not going to care. Uh, are they included no in the 43%? They so are. so the 43% is based on the number of sites for the, the top 10, million, right? 10, 10 million most popular sites. Yep. I think. There's I was a lot Cloudf of I, I was at Cloudflest um, this, uh, this weekend, and, and there were two interesting talks, both mentioning the number of active WordPress sites, and the, the, mm. the variance in percentages was, was quite different. It, I want I want to hear that. Uh, so it depends on what you count as an active site. It depends mm -hmm. on what you um, how you calculate what it is you're using and and and, and from there you're subtracting um, not subtracting um, you're, 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 you're calculating with an assumption that the rest outside of what you know that you just, measured by uh, you know by bots doing their thing mm -hmm. you're, you're you're assuming that the rest is going to work the same way but you don't know that it's an assumption you don't know um, that. that that's correct no so um yeah there were two there were two folks um sharing different numbers um and i i don't have the right answer in terms of what i think is the the best approach, but I'm because we've been using the um, uh, build with statistic for yeah. years now, even though build with changed their source of data from Alexa to Google. Mm -hmm. um, I still think we're just going to have to use that because it doesn't make sense to come up with a new percentage now. But um, in terms of what is a site, do we, you know, um, Look, if we have to ask the question, what is a website? That means we don't know how we're measuring it. Like, let's, let's just be honest so, about that. So what is a WordPress site? Is a static yeah. version of a WordPress site still, still a WordPress okay. site? Yes, it is. But when you scan it, it doesn't tell you it is WordPress. So, right. you know, th that percentage that we're just discussing in terms of how many people actually use uh, um Headless versions of mm. WordPress, we don't know because we oh, can't well. properly measure those. Um, but yeah, uh, is it necessary? Uh, probably not. Probably not. Yeah, that, that, that's a good way to put it, I guess. Uh, if you really care about performance and, and like you want to build your own stuff, maybe that's an easier way to go. Like you, when you control literally everything, headless, word, not necessarily, but maybe. Could be. Yeah. Could be. Yeah. Could One, be. I want to share something that literally came up it came to my inbox this morning it, it's rank math i they have a page builder now i think wp spectra because it's, okay. it's an email from rank math that just talks about that and comparing it to other page builders but i'll okay. I'll, I'll just read the numbers real quick i'm not i'm not from i i never heard of it before but like they brag about how it's better than elementor beaver and all those other I, assuming well, I that's even rank I, I guess they would of be course, they're of marketing course. themselves but, but yeah. there's a there's a table that, that reads the data from Pingdom about performance and page speed and, and yeah, GT yeah. metrics and all that stuff. So basically, blank WordPress, 26 kilobytes, six requests. 
I don't know what page this is. Maybe it's homepage, whatever it is. Elementor Pro, probably two megabytes, fifty two megabytes and fifty requests. Beaver Builder, one point eight and twenty nine, and then they brag about Spectra being one point eight and twenty two. Like even to go from six to twenty two, is like I will hmm. never approve and understand that. Like if one plugin makes you go from six requests to twenty two requests. So the number of requests, I'll, I, I, I will say, I, I will say this with HTTP two. I'm re less concerned about it. Um, it's I, more I about the recklessness. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, abs I agree with that. Absolutely. It's more about the recklessness of, of like, do I even, how many of those are necessary in this particular page? Well, you know, if, if, we're, if we're talking page builders, my, my logic is still that if I can do it without a page builder, I don't need to load a whole plugin to take care of something that is already inside WordPress itself. So uh, full site editing. I've That's... been using it exclusively for about seven, eight months now. And uh, are there bugs? Oh hell yeah! Uh, <laughs> some are not even funny anymore. Um, I had I had a bug where if I added um, 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 a hashtag, so mm -hmm. an, a hashtag zero five five, right? The number fifty five. If right. I added that somewhere, it got added as a tag, like a literal tag inside my, yeah. And I'm like, it's not supposed to be a tag. So why are we doing this? Because it made no sense. That's that's a funky, quirky bug. But, you know, uh, there's more. <laughs> this it's was one that stands like, out to me. Like, why, why? Why did this happen? Yeah, that, that, that that's the question there. Uh, the, the main problem, this, in my opinion, the biggest problem with WordPress performance in general is people using shit they don't really need because they saw the demo and it looked cool. Yeah. Like it how many cool. websites how many websites have a page builder that looks like the demo because like if you don't even know what your website should look like and you get inspiration from uh, a yeah, demo yeah. of a plugin you don't need a plugin. Like you just you maybe you need simple layout, simple pages and maybe we're just old and we're just yelling at clouds saying that. But dude, you, you can't just load Elementor because you I, saw the demo and that one page looked nice. It, that's not how the website should be designed. I, I think uh, I think you're right, but I also think that's a very difficult one to solve because of how because you're essentially asking people who have no idea what to look for. They being like, hmm, let me see if this. Oh, this looks good. Great, do it. Um, Is that a good way to do anything? Is, no. That was not a rhetorical. That was a question. Yeah, <laughs> it's not. It's not. No. So I, I, I think that's 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 a difficult one to solve. So um, you just said um, this is this is something that I, I worry about or, or something like that. But like, what would you consider the biggest challenges we have going forward? Is it is it that? Is it that pe exactly people not that. fully fully uh, fully understanding the implications of their choices and the tools that they use? Is that it? That's exactly what it is. Like, do you want this super size? Do you want fries with that? Like, we're in that state of WordPress <laughs> evolution. Like, that, that's where we are. That's literally where we are because, you know, do you want these 20 CSS files extra with my plugin? And, and people don't even know. You want that as a menu or just a burger? Yeah, yeah exactly. I think oh, that you is. You want the menu? Fun. Do you want to supersize that? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That, that's a great yeah, analogy. We, we have a special promotion today. Yeah, all that stuff. Yeah. That, is the, that, that has been the biggest problem for. I would say at least the last five years, probably longer, that the junk that's pushed you know, to the browser because mm -hmm. of irresponsible development, mostly by plugin authors, mostly yep. by plugin authors. And then, I mean, if, if you're just a person, not a non-developer assembling a website, you're not going to know that. And then by agencies, no. not auditing and vetting every single plugin they install. Like oh, that so is a, we're not going to get there like today. We're not going to go there today. But that is also a problem. That is also a very, very big problem in, in the entire so, ecosystem. So I'm I'm invited to speak at WordCamp Switzerland next weekend. Um, no, not this weekend, but weekend over. Mm -hmm. um, my talk is titled WooCommerce, but faster. Um, <laughs> you know, why, why make things complicated in titles if they don't exactly. have to be? Exactly, make it obvious. Uh, yeah. Um, one of the things I mention as... Um, Right. It's all optimized. It's great. Wonderful. Thank you for putting thought and energy into that. But from there, most folks just kind of go, okay, wonderful. It's done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have the caching plugin turned on. It'll do whatever it needs to do. Uh, and I'm like, no, every single update 
Yeah. Every single thing you add, test. It's so simple. And even if you, if you don't want to use your fully, um, you know, continuous development and integrations and stuff like that, you don't need to go all. And you those. should. And you should. And you should, but you don't need to. If that's not, you know, if that's not your wheelhouse, if that's too complex, there's. There's a, this is sound horrible in the context of what we just said, but there's a plugin for that, right? You can install a plugin, which is at, yeah. at minimal cost, but it will tell you certain pages like, okay, so we went from uh, 0.4 to 2.4. Something's off here, yeah. right? You want to know. You you need to be testing. It's never it, it so the the whole. So you you raised a, a, a good example of things that are going the wrong way. Um, I'd like to add to that that it's most most folks think it's a set and forget, and oh okay I heard I need to do my updates okay great I'll do my updates, um, but you need to test. You can't assume. Uh, um, the whole assumption game is so strong. It's, it hurts in so many ways, um, and then you know they complain it's not fast anymore. But but the th the reason that is again just an opinion the reason that's happening is because wordpress is a crutch like we just rely on it doing all the heavy lifting and that's why you know it's there it's doing its thing it's fine i don't need to worry yeah. about anything yeah and that that's not to say wordpress is bad like wordpress i never want to hear wordpress is slow because it's not like install not, WordPress oh, also, on, on the shittiest server you have it's going to be fast yeah. Do it supersized and, and with fries, it's going to be slow. And like with any other <laughs> platforms, that's going to happen. So that, that, that's really, that, that's, I, I just, I don't like, I don't like the fact how easy it is to slow down a WordPress website. I, I did a, a, a meetup presentation here in Porto at WordPress meetup. And one of the slides was the only, like one of the easiest things to do in life is to slow down a WordPress website because you just let it yeah. be. You literally yeah, just yeah. let it exist. It's going to, it's going to find a way. Or give it to a client a, and, and give them admin access. Yeah, I was going to give an example. Uh, Vikas uh, from InstaWP uh, was at CloudFest, and he uh, he mentioned that um, I think it was a brother, but um, the, he built a WooCommerce site for stuff he needed to uh, sell, and the items were about fifty thousand, so not a small site. And um, he he quickly ended up with an extremely slow site. So Vika said, well, let me log in and see what's going on. So Vika in, goes in and he said, and I see like 120 plugins installed. None of them are doing what they're supposed to be doing, but they're loading everything everywhere all the time. And he goes, so um, I, I, you know, that, the end result of that is that uh, the client itself, and I, I say client because it, uh, from uh, from WordPress's perspective, that was that's a client loss because he now is on spot uh, on uh, Spotify, Shopify, mm -hmm. uh, and his I problems are solved. I do that because... every time. Spotify, Shopify. I've never got any right. So, so don't feel bad. I, I think this was my first one. I think this was my first one. But uh, you know, I'm sure it's going to happen now. That now that you've cemented it in my brain. But uh, so that, that's a good example of someone uh, having the having the best intentions, even having the the resources yeah. in terms of his of his brother who knows stuff. Uh, you end up with a situation where nobody really uh, should be going. Adding a hundred plugins, uh, like I, 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 I'd, I'd even say it. Maybe we should have a filter inside of WordPress that says, "Look, look, buddy, you're at fifty plugins now. <laughs> Are you sure you want to add number fifty-one? Yeah, that, that that would be good. Also, maybe, maybe I, I, this is a this is a business opportunity for a developer out there. Just build a plugin that lets the site owner thinks they're installing a plugin and just yeah. block, block the plugin completely. Just make them think, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. do you want to install that? Yeah, it's working great. Just just make it fake, do something. Yeah. It, because I, the, I, the whole, yeah. I, I, I will add to this that um, the whole discussion of uh, too many plugins is, plugins is, a, is, is a wrong thing. Uh, I kind of disagree because it's it, it's more about what is being loaded and done during uh, in in those plugins, right? If you have a hundred monster plugins, um, sure, not good thing. Uh, I maintain a site that has about one hundred and ten, I think, mm -hmm. um, uh, and it's and it's fine. It's working fine because that's, there's that's a there's smart, that, it's not the yeah, same. Well, 
You need well, those 110. Well, if you don't, so, if you don't need the 50. So 50 percent, 50 percent is is custom, right? It it does yeah. something small, something yeah. here and there, uh, and the other stuff that is just needed for whatever purpose it it serves. But um, but yeah, it's not a black and white thing. Like uh, don't have too many plugins. That, it's yeah, not yeah. about the number. It's a number of no. unnecessary Be things. Like if you do everything everywhere all at once in WordPress, yeah. like it's gonna fail. It's it's just not gonna work. Be cautious what you're adding. Exactly. And don't exactly. don't. Um, I I think that filter would be good. The fifty, like let's say, I, I think it's a, a arbitrary number somewhat, but uh, it'd be nice to have some sort of feel like, yo, dude, whoa, whoa, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're asking me to add a fifty first plugin. What's wrong with the fifty ones you have? Fill out this survey first. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> upload your passport like the, yeah, the, yeah exactly no but but we, it, we, we'd like to see you be sound of mind and body first please thank you confirm you know this. What, the, what the problem is there because it's easy like you can't talk yeah. about us and other wordpress people we know that 120 plugins is a lot like whether yeah. you need them or not it's a lot of plugins yeah. someone just installing the plugins and like having running a website they don't know if others have five or ten or two hundred or a thousand no. Like maybe just say, you know, that an average user has 17 plugins installed. That's a good filter. Maybe that's, that's a good filter. A, that, that's a, something that should be part of the core. You're, you're and, a smarter man than I. I would have gone for a hard number, but uh, yeah. Oh, I mean, so any, you have an e-commerce store. Okay, great. So, so the average is about yeah. 35 plugins. Okay. Are you sure? Because you're adding more and more. Yeah, that's a good one. I mean, that, that could work. I have the name for the plugin. Are you sure? Are you sure? Yeah, that, that, that's good. That's not bad. Yeah. yeah. Or don't drink and install. I, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I might build it. I might build it. It sounds fun. Are you sure? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Hello Dolly still has legs. So why not? I, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. I, I, there's a Samuel L. Jackson version of it. I don't know if it's still available, but there used to be a Samuel L. Jackson oh, version I did, of it. That... I did one like eight years seven years ago hello chloe it was quoting chloe kardashian oh okay it was yeah. actually available you could download not not in the repo of course it was on github so so the samuel jackson thing i think was in the repo okay. i installed it on my brother i installed it on my brother's side and um we're both um pulp fiction fans like to the core um and i've never la heard him laugh so hard when he yeah. first saw like Dude, I got Samuel Jackson like everywhere in my site. That's awesome. Wait, front end back as well? No, 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 back end, <laughs> okay, back end. That's okay. it. But but everywhere. Right, right, funny. right. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, so yeah, that 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 sort of stuff that uh, made him uh, <laughs> very exciting. Um. Uh. So, uh, in terms of exciting, uh, there's a lot of stuff that we've talked about. Things that you don't like, but what do you like? What do you see as a bright future ahead of us in terms of performance? <sighs> Like, is there any any, I, yeah. any 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 tool, any any movement, any focus you see happening? You go like, yes, that's me. I'm bringing it on. I don't like ending weeks on on a sad note, but I don't. I just don't. I think it's going to get worse. <laughs> I think it's going to keep getting worse and worse for, and worse. Like like every for those of you listening, up. it's a Friday. It's yeah, a Friday. yeah, we're recording yeah. this on a Friday. Uh, uh, I I don't see it happening. Like. Uh, we, we're boiling the planet as a humanity and no one cares about that. Who's going to care about extra plugins? Yeah, I, I just don't see that happening. If we're, so, if we're being, uh, it, yeah. Yeah, there, there's more people, more individuals caring about it. Like, I think yeah. that's a good thing, but there's also infinitely more people who just are going to assemble websites and not care about it. Yeah. So, and then here, here's the thing that I, if we're being cynical, here's the thing that I would like to add to that. Um, here we are optimizing the hell out of uh, a WordPress site in any way, shape, form possible. And here we have YouTube asking us to add way more shorts. Here we have Instagram asking us to upload more shorts. Here we have TikTok. Like the amount of data that needs to move from A to B for TikTok, for a YouTube video, eh. Your I'm website not, pales not. in comparison. If we're being cynical, it's completely unnecessary. Yeah, that that's a good point, but like, don't add to the fire. Like, there's no need, and it's not. Yeah. So but, I should I should not be uploading this this podcast this with sure, video, but, but like 240p <laughs> or something like that. Just be you know, <laughs> for all time's sake. 
Dave the pandas, <laughs> all that stuff. No, but the, but the, I had I had guests on my podcast, and we talked about Marcus and uh, Marcus from uh, uh, the German SEO guy, like a really, really, really. Yeah, 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 yeah. Marcus Tandler, I believe. Yes. And we yes. talked about that, like the 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 impact of internet and all the supporting devices in 2020, I believe it was. Uh, no, 2020, 2019, so before the pandemic, was as high yep. as the airline industry. We've reached that spot, and it's going to like double by 2025. It's going to oh, get worse hurts. and worse and worse and worse. Yeah. And we're crying about Leonardo DiCaprio flying, flying private to, to pick up a new model. Like, that's not the <laughs> was problem. Was 25 are... again? The old one went, went, was 25, turned 25 yeah. again? Is yeah. that what yeah, it was? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. exactly. Yeah, yeah. I so, understand his problem. I understand his problem. The, the 25 <laughs> <laughs> no look i'm i'm turning 50 this year um just half like my age half my just age like, we're not gonna do that like i know of course of course no. like of course not. but but uh it's a bigger problem that people realize like the, yeah, yeah. The, the the carbon emissions caused by internet and supporting devices let's put it that way because yeah. like that's what it is and that's every TikTok, that's every snap, that like everything. I know, I know. We're it, it, so I, yeah. I, 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 I said it jokingly, but um, um, you are right. This is a thing. It's a huge problem. It's a huge, huge problem. problem. So I, I do want to try to get on a uh, to end on a positive note. Um, so, what is the best tip you have for anyone looking to do? Um, some kind of optimization for their WordPress site that right. is just simple, easy, click, and you're done. What would that be? One thing. One thing is, and this is because I believe most people don't know this, know what, what, what the DOM looks like, what the page looks like that's generated by WordPress. Just do the waterfall chart in web page test and see how many, how, how many unnecessary assets you have and how what's, many of them What's being loaded? Yeah, what's being loaded and what what doesn't need to be there. Let, let, remove the unnecessary. Let's start with that. We'll make we'll make internet twice as fast, at least. Just by doing that, you, first you need to remove, then you need to optimize what's left. Like that that is that is yep. really the formula you need to follow. If you just remove, you're doing great. You're doing really really well. That's a great first step. Yep. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you asked for one step. You asked for one. Step. I, I I did I did. <laughs> and that's and easy. That... Like that's easy. That's super easy. Yeah. And on that bombshell, thank you so much for uh, being on the podcast. And uh, I think there's a few more things we uh, we can talk about. So we'll uh, we'll try and uh, organize a second one. But uh, thank you for today. Um, thank you. And see you all on the next one. <laughs>